Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the shows if you have not already done so. And uh, with that, let's uh, go ahead and uh, get started with the stories for this episode. Starting off over at CIO today, this is a kind of a big deal. Uh, there's a new bash vulnerability that has been found. It's called Shellshock, and it's it's been around for a while, and there's a huge number of devices that use Shellshock. It's basically a vulnerability in Bash. You definitely want to be keeping an eye out of uh, your favorite Linux distro, or if you're an OS X user or a Unix user or whatever, if Bash is involved, you will definitely want to make sure that you keep an eye out for a security update from uh, your vendor. Um, this is a big deal. Make sure you get uh, patched up. Um, basically, the shell shock vulnerability, it's known as the bash or the born again shell bug. It is a focus for malicious scanning and at least one botnet. Uh, hackers haven't even begun to test the limits of this vulnerability. This is potentially going to be way worse than the heart bleed, bu heart bleed bug. Uh, the shell shock vulnerability uh, could um, really severely uh, throw a monkey wrench into things. Um, internet security firm FireEye is reporting that it's seen plenty of malicious traffic using the bash bug, some of it possibly from Russia. Uh, the activities included distributed denial of service attacks, malware droppers, reverse shell hacks, backdoors, and data exfiltration. Um Elsewhere, security researchers at Encapsula logged more than 17,400 attacks at an average of 725 an hour. The company said that more than 1,800 domains in its network were attacked from about 400 unique IP addresses, more than half of them originating in China and the United States. So basically, their uh, attackers are using scanners to bombard networks and seek out vulnerable machines. Most of the attention from hackers has gone to the common gateway interface vector. Uh, it's an interface between a web server and executables that produce dynamic content, otherwise known as a CGI gateway. This is a really common attack uh, vector. Um, essentially, you know, if you have a router that runs some version of BSD or Linux uh, that has a unified web interface, you are potentially vulnerable which this is the vast majority of what routers, wireless access gateway points or wireless access points. You know, I mean, the, there's a, a potentially humongous um, attack footprint. So uh, definitely uh, be keeping an eye out for a patch for this uh, from vendors. It's a big deal. Uh, it's the first thing we're talking about on this show. Um, definitely check it out. From uh, linuxgizmos.com, Android DBMS adds bidirectional sync. This is kind of cool. ITTIA has added bidirectional sync to the ITTIA DB SQL for Android, enabling a backend uh, uh, RDMS to store device data and download synced updates for each device. Um, in March of last year, ITTIA announced the Android version of its Linux compatible. Database SQL lightweight embedded relational database. They've now added bi-directional synchronization for Android apps to the Android version in order to bridge the gap of collecting big data on the go in an era of unprecedented influx of sensitive data that is managed and collected on mobile devices, according to the company. So this is kind of cool. Uh, definitely check it out. Um, you know, uh, we it's it's kind of neat to see new features and and such added from games on net. Uh, Borderlands Two is now available on Linux, so if you are a Linux gamer, definitely check this out. This is kind of cool. I don't have a lot of time to play Linux games, but uh, or just game actually games in general. 
But uh, still, I thought this was pretty neat and thought I'd uh, at least point it out here for those of you who may want to uh, check it out on Linux. From linuxgizmos.com, again, uh, there is an FPGA-enabled vision system which uses USB 3 cams that runs on Linux. This is kind of neat. NI unveiled a fanless rugged vision computer that runs NI Linux on a quad-core Atom E3845 and offers an FPGA and support for 350 megabytes a second USB 3 vision cameras. So National Instruments, otherwise known as NI, has delivered its real-time Linux real-time OS on a variety of embedded industrial computers and control systems, including its recent compact RIO four-slot performance controller. Now the company is applying uh, NI Linux to machine vision with its new USB 3 vision compatible NI CVS 14. 1959RT. They have some pictures of it here. Pretty cool, along with some uh, pictures of the cameras, the USB 3 cameras. This is pretty neat. Now, obviously, this is for more industrial ish type applications. I, I can't see, you know, myself or other general tinkerers at home uh, really uh, getting in on this, but still pretty cool nonetheless. From NASDAQ.com, Red Hat plans $700 million in U.S. currency. Convertible note offer $400 million stock buyback. Uh, Red Hat is planning to offer uh, $700 million of convertible senior notes that mature in 2019 to raise funds to repay the cost of hedge transactions and other purposes, with $400 million of the proceeds targeted to repurchase the software company's stock. Uh, Red Hat, best known for its Enterprise Linux OpenStack platform, said initial purchasers will also have an option for an additional $105 million of notes under the same conditions as the main offer. If purchasers exercise their options for additional notes, Red Hat also plans to sell additional warrants and use the combined proceeds for additional convertible note, hedge transactions, and related warrant transactions. So basically Red Hat's doing some financial bookkeeping and uh, it's interesting to see, uh, you know, the inner workings of that sort of thing. From newsmaker.com.au, the telecom industry and vendors unite to build a common open platform to accelerate network functions virtualization. Uh, the Linux Foundation, the nonprofit organization dedicated to accelerating the growth of Linux and collaborative development, uh, today announced the founding of the open platform for NFV project, otherwise known as the OPNFV. It will be a carrier-grade, integrated, open-source reference platform intended to accelerate the introduction of new products and services. Just what we need. More new products and services. Uh, Platinum-level founding members include AT&T, <coughs> Brocade, China Mobile, Cisco, Dell, Ericsson, Hewlett-Packard, Highway, uh, IBM, Intel, Juniper Networks, NEC, Nokia Networks, NTT, Docomo, Red Hat, Telecom Italia, and Vodafone. Silver level founding members include Six Wind, Alcatel, Lucent, Arm, Broadcom, Cable Labs, Cavium, CenturyLink, Sienna, Citrix, ClearPath Networks, Connect Stream, Corient, Cyan, Dorado Software, Ixia, Metaswitch Networks, Marantis, Orange, Sandvine, Sprint, and Wind River. So this basically is the who's who of uh, Linux and open source as far as large corporations um, actively doing open source and Linux development. So I, pretty neat. I mean, I, I was being somewhat facetious when I said, you know, like we all need more, uh, but still pretty cool. From EE Times, Hewlett Packard ships the first ARM servers. This is kind of cool. A year after demonstrating its CPU agnostic moonshot server, Hewlett Packard has announced it is shipping models using ARM based system on chips from Applied Micro and Texas Instruments. PayPal, Sandia National Labs, and the University of Utah are Hewlett Packard's first users of the systems. The news marks a small but significant milestone of commercial deployments of 64 and 32 bit ARM based servers in a market dominated by Intel x86 processors. To date, large rivals such as Dell have shipped pro prototype ARM servers and small companies such as Boston Limited have sold small quantities of ARM servers. So this is really kind of the first major push by a huge vendor, Hewlett Packard, which Hewlett Packard is a major vendor, um, 
to uh, to get um, you know ARM based system on a chip, small servers, that sort of thing, in the hands of customers, and actually you know making forward progress on that. So really awesome. Definitely check it out. So that will do it uh, for this edition of Linux Newslog. As always. Everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe if you have not already done so. And uh, for those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then.